not the funniest thing. That's why the fact that we schedule this is often. We don't used to do it as often as we are staying together. Fun fact is we can go as much as in one month. <laughs> and we have not do this show. <laughs> Hi viewers, welcome back to Guinea Talks. My name is Guinea. I'm in Nigeria and I make videos centered on my lifestyle. If you are seeing this channel for the first time, please kindly click on videos to see a list of all the videos that I have. And please do well to subscribe and binge watch my videos. I have over 25 interesting videos that you could watch. And thank you to my returning subscribers for being so consistent. In today's video, I have my beloved darling sweetie, Cornelicious husband with me. Thank you as for being part of this journey. We appreciate all your likes, comments, shares. God bless you. In the video we made together concerning how we are coping in our long distance marriage, some of you asked us some questions that didn't occur to us to discuss on how we have been coping with the sexual relationship in our long distance marriage. Why are some people ask questions if masturbation with your partner is regarded as a sin so if this is the kind of content you would like to watch then please kindly watch this video to the end what we'll be sharing today please is by no means a standard every relationship is actually unique and what works for us may not work for you this is basically to answer the questions that were raised and most of these questions actually came as private messages for those of you who have not seen our video on how we are coping in our long distance marriage i'll link it somewhere please do well to watch that video for better understanding why is talking about the sexual relationship of our marriage important yes this is because a lot of people are looking for a godly couple that they can at least maybe learn one or two things from so we hope that at the end of this video you might have one or two things to pick that might be beneficial to you by the grace of god as god will have us to share for those of us that are anglicans when the priest wants to join us we know what the priest always read marriage is given primarily that husband and wife through their bodily union which better satisfy one another i can't remember now but i know it was read on the day of my marriage so you will agree with me that the sexual aspect of marriage it is very important for both of us what has been working for us on it how are we able to cope maybe you should go first primarily we don't joke with communication at any time at any place in any way we communicate mm -hmm. even if you are betting you can you can talk through video calls through video calls or audio calls whichever way say what you are doing at that time that has um helped us helped us keep that intimate intimate, intimacy now okay intact but it has helped keep our sexual intimacy intact do you think it has translated to doing the do does it lead us to further like the second category of question that came said is masturbation with your partner is seen that masturbating with a stranger is a sin but masturbating with your partner should not be regarded as a sin so in the form of that communication do we go as far as masturbating well i've never tried that the scripture says that uh, marriage is holy marriage is honorable, honorable bed undefined on in hebrews in the book of hebrews so chapter 13 we verse. felt engaging so in such will be defied okay. our marriage bed we never saw, even though the thought came, but we never saw that uh, as a defying. We saw that as contradiction to, to, our, to our conviction, mm -hmm. to our work with the Lord. Like we said, this is not a standard. We are only sharing our own story. It's not to condemn anybody. Another scripture that has also strengthened us and prevented us from engaging in such. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5 has also been our succor. You might want to read it all. just like Paul said in Corinthians. I do not know what the Lord has said about this matter. Much as we will say we do not know what the Lord has said, it is based on our own personal conviction that we choose not to do this. To buttress for down that scripture, one of the verses says, Do not be a slave to, to your you. desires. Mm -hmm. I believe that the desires also include sexual desires, in as much as sex is important in the union in the marriage. But the scripture is saying, Do not be a slave. To eat. In other words, one may be careful not to be enslaved by suggestions that come up as regarding satisfying sex. Another thing that works for us is we actually plan visit often. Three months may have been the longest time we have stayed apart. You know the funniest thing? That's why the fact that we schedule visit often. We don't used to do it as often as we are staying together. Fun fact is we can go as much as in one month. <laughs> and we have not do this. <laughs> to add to that point, 
when we finally see each other, mm-hmm. surprisingly enough, the emphasis is no longer on the act itself, yeah. but just seeing each other, being together, having each other around, mm-hmm. that alone has given us a level of satisfaction, satisfaction a level of companion, affection, mm-hmm. you know, emotional satisfaction, being together alone has mm-hmm. taken care yeah, of that. that. The beam light is no longer on the, sex the, act, itself. Itself. the act itself. The yes. act itself. So, so that is one good thing about making effort to schedule this visits. Is Fine. As For as those well. who are who country are part, apart, country mm. apart, well, the Lord is our strength. We, so are we, we only hope that the, the time, it the time lag should be shortened so mm. that that barrier will be broken. Another thing we've also done is uh, try to spice up the union by mm. sending sweet messages. Sweet messages, you know, mm. messages that not just not the conventional "I love you, I miss you," yes, but then. But once in a while, send some. Hit the hammer. You know. Hit the um, nail on the head with the hammer. You understand. <laughs> so it has its own way of keeping hope alive. Hope alive. <laughs> there was one message my husband sent me recently, like I'm missing you. I want, and I'm like, I was at the, at the peak of this of this. I was so occupied, and the message came up as a huge distraction. I just paused everything I was doing. I laughed. I had to even call him. Honey, of no problem. That message was actually refreshing for me when I saw the, I want you, you know, that kind of, I want you right now. <laughs> that may be the interpretation she gave it. I, if, if I say I want you right now, it, yeah, because it, does, it doesn't really yes. mean like, you know, come to the, but it was a welcome distraction, yeah. especially because I have been so worked up that period. So it was just felt hard for me to know that uh, uh, this sexy mama is still desired by her sweet sustain us fan we adopt the things that we both agree on yes so we cannot work together except they, they be agreed they be agreed so yes. whatever thing you choose to let the boats be in agreement, be in agreement. Mm-hmm. that it is only at that point that it will give god glory the glory mm-hmm. that is at that point that the marriage bed will not be defied, defied. so i think for us that is one of the things that have helped us. We carry each other along. We agree. We agree. We agree. Whatever thing I want to do and my wife is not comfortable with it, yes. that's the end of it. And whatever she brings up what she wants to do mm-hmm. and I'm not comfortable with it, that's, that's the end it. of it. We don't do it. End of that. So nobody forces it mm-hmm. on the other person. Mm-hmm. I've heard couples engage in sexual games and scheduled intimacy. Now by sexual games, I mean there's this online platform and app like you know designed for couples and long distance marriage LDM so what this app does is both of you you know you are connected in your various location and you do the do so some people engage in that because both of them are consented that is what works for them but for us we don't engage in stuff like this it's just boils down to that masturbation we discussed earlier and like you know both of them have a specific time they make call and then they do pleasure each other body we only do what both of us have consented to for example when we are even doing the do my husband knows where to touch and where not to touch because he knows it may not pleasure me and same also goes for me vice versa and this all boils down to communicating your need your sexual wants and both of you are happy and sexually fulfilled we also careful not to give room or whatever that the enemy will use to find its way into, into our, their into the marriage yes. into our life uh, so it is better not to engage in something than to ask for grace yes, because not to fall for it yes. so um, we felt that adopting such things may open the room mm. uh, may, may op- yeah, expose us to risk of falling prey to the wise of the enemy as regarding our consecration, our bodily consecration yes. in our union. Okay, so um, if you do that with your co- with your partner, what what happens when he or she is not available? Mm-hmm. Are you sure you will not begin to seek for alternative? And once that sets in, then the promise and vow you made in marriage is already That's compromised. Cool. It's already compromised. So we are careful to guide against that. In all, just ask that the Lord will help you. Yes. Uh, all you need is God's help 
uh, it may not be easy. But you're not yet married. So all these things are not issue to you. But the no, moment you get you married, you get married, it becomes a big know? deal. Uh -huh. So um, there, is, there, is, there is there is there is a proverb in Abuja dialect: "Mouth we don't the job, we don't the job." Mm. Uh -huh. But the Lord will help you yeah. so that you won't chop the one. Okay, that will hook your neck. <laughs> for me, sexual intimacy is not only doing the do. And for me as a woman, sexual intimacy starts from what happens before the landing. Everything that my husband does to me, for example, showing me acts of love, helping me with one or two things, consistently reminding me, oh, have you done this and done that? Maybe I just give him a lowdown of my itinerary of the day and ask him to remind me. The moment he fills in all those gaps for me, I feel sexually fulfilled, actually. It's not until he goes down and begin to, you know, penetrate, <laughs> no. So find out what works for you. Some people also love things that you do to them, those little little things, you know, it gives them that fulfillment sexually. And when all these things culminate, you will see that when you finally meet together, when you finally schedule that visit, you will explode. It will cascade into something glorious that both of you, oh, you will enjoy yourself. Okay, so I think basically in a nutshell, uh, as we round up, yeah. basically is keep the communication open. Consent to what both of you want. Uh -huh. And why you consent? Why you consent to that? Be careful, such that they don't you expose you to risk of uh, compromising your vow and your godly standards. Your consecration. Okay. In marriage. For those that are within proximity, by this I mean intra in the same country. If you can plan visiting each other as often as you can. These are the basic things that have been working for us. May God help and strengthen as many of us that are in long distance marriage not to fall into sexual temptations. But thank you so much for contributing on today's video. It's my pleasure to always be here. Thank you so much for joining us in today's video. I come your way in my next video. My name is Guinea signing out from Guinea Talks.